Hi, I'm Manuel Paish, and I'm going to talk to you about what is platform as a product. And why does it matter? Why is it helpful to think about the platform as a product? And by the way, I'm really excited to be part of PlatformCon. I think it's a great initiative because there are many uh, variations and different ideas about platform and different implementations, different approaches. And I think it's great to have a, a forum, a kind of place where we can share our experiences. So my talk is going to focus kind of on the fundamentals of what is platform as a product. So we're actually going to start by defining what is platform and then what is a product and how the two come together. So I'm one of the authors of the book Team Topologies, Organizing Teams, uh, Business and Technology Teams for Fast Flow. And the book came out in 2019, it has been quite well adopted. And I think partially the reason is because it's not very prescriptive. It provides a set of um, thinking tools, patterns, anti-patterns, and also constraints that we should be aware of if we want to achieve fast flow, meaning quick delivery of value to customers. So with this talk, by the end of this talk, we should be able to answer this question clearly, right? What is platform as a product and why should I adopt this approach? It's interesting that um, it's fairly recent, the kind of practical application of platform uh, as a product, right? It's something that we've heard probably for a long time, but not everyone really understood. We didn't have a body of knowledge to explain what this means and how does it manifest. So it's interesting, uh, ThoughtWorks, they had their famous technology radar that they publish every quarter. Um, back in 2020, about two years ago, they were saying you should adopt product management to internal platforms, right? Understanding the importance of thinking in terms of product in the platforms, in the internal platforms. And they were saying you can trial platform engineering product teams, where typically this means a platform team that takes uh, responsibility for a product that we're offering inside the platform. So that was a trial two years ago. And just one year later, April 2021, um, an updated version of the RAID that we're saying was already saying you should adopt platform engineering product teams um, and move away from kind of layered platform teams split by technology. So this means we're thinking about actually what is it that our users need to consume, uh, what's going to help them, and not the technology itself, the underlying technology, but actually organizing by what products are we offering, which might mean that we, we as a platform team, need to know about different technologies that we will make up this product that is what our internal teams actually need to use. So let's start by defining what is a platform. That's obviously an overloaded term, and so we should have some more clarity. At least, what do we mean in team topologies by a platform? So essentially, we adopted this definition from Evan Butcher, um, where he's saying a digital platform is a foundation of self-service APIs, tools, services, knowledge, and support arranged as a compelling internal product. So this definition actually has a lot built into it. Uh, self-service is key, so it's not a nice to have. It's if we want fast flow ability to go fast and make um, respond quickly to customer needs, we need a platform, internal platform that provides what we need, but in a fast way. That means it has to be self-service. We can't depend on creating requests for another team to then have the time and have the availability to look at the request and maybe answer the request in a week or whenever, right? We need things to be much more immediate. And so the platform needs to be a self-service, uh, but we need the platform teams. We need their support. We need their, their knowledge to make the platform easy to understand and to use by uh, the internal teams. And finally, we want to make the platform a compelling internal product. So one aspect of this means that if it's compelling, it means uh, people voluntarily use the platform. It's not mandated on the teams that you must use this, this kind of shared services in the platform. And that drives very important incentives for platform teams to focus on users, to focus on their needs, and to actually build just what the users need and not more than that. Um, and so that's very important. Evan Botcher was also saying that the platform should create a path of least resistance, right? 
not mandate things on teams, but actually show them that this is the easiest way to do what you need to do. Make the right thing the easiest thing to do. We say in Team Topologies also that a platform ends up being a curated experience for the engineers who are the customers of platform. Engineers and possibly other, other roles in our internal teams, right? And so this sets a very different tone to what is an internal platform, which moves away from a focus on technology, on what can we build, and make it much more user-centric. What should we build? and how should be the experience for the users so that the platform is actually uh, making a difference for their, their work, for their lives as a, as a team. We also have uh, from last year, and you might hear about it in other talks, the State of DevOps report from Puppet Labs, where they actually um, asked several questions that were related to the topology of teams, the interactions between teams, and one of the things they found was that not every platform team is automatically successful, right? It's not just because we, we have a platform in place that is going to be successful. Um, we need to treat the platform as a product because of that user centricity, because of that focus on who are customers, how do they need to consume the platform, right? It's much more outwards focused approach versus uh, what sometimes happened that we're just focused internally on what we can build and not what our users need. In Team Topologies, we actually talk about uh, something called thinnest viable platform. Obviously, similar to minimum viable product, but applied to the platform, where we should be really focusing and defining, understanding what is the smallest set of APIs, documentation, and tools that we need to accelerate our, in our teams internally the teams that are developing modern uh, services based on uh, software. And so the platform, one of the keys to achieve a platform as a product that is a good fit for our customers is to build and focus on the minimum set of services, not on the largest possible set of services that we could potentially build, but actually provide the care and attention to a small set that is really what we have um, found and has been shown to accelerate our teams. So, in other words, a good platform is just big enough, but not, not bigger than that, right? So we need to keep this in mind to avoid kind of having a bloated platform that provides too much functionality that really is not used or is not making a difference to the, to the teams. Another aspect of treating platform as a product then um, is to evolve the platform with um, we can use the team interaction modes that we talk about in team topologies because they help us understand much better uh, when should we interact with other teams and in which way so let me explain that a bit better when we are developing a new service or we're, we're uh, creating a new version of an existing service um, we're evolving the platform we should expect strong collaboration between the platform team that is responsible for that service and at least one or two of the, the teams that are going to consume that service or that new, uh, maybe a new API version or whatever it is. So during this period, you can see here, you have two teams collaborating. What we're doing is quick discovery. What do the teams, the customers need? Why do we need this new service or why do we need this new uh, version of the service? what are actually the use cases that we should cover for the teams and, and how do they want to consume it, right? Um, and so all of this should not be done in isolation by the platform team, it should be collaborating with the uh, internal customers, right? To understand what they really need, maybe do uh, ideally quick prototyping, get feedback very quickly. Does this look like what you, you needed, what you want to use? And then over time, as we discover most of the of these aspects, we can then focus more on providing the, the necessary support and right level of documentation as well for those service or, or new versions of the service, right? And so this allows us to kind of understand also as the service evolves over time, do we need more collaboration? Do we need to understand better the user needs or do we need to actually stabilize, mature the service so we can then be uh, consumed by more teams and basically make it generally available 
to the whole organization or part of the organization. So ideally, the platform teams are, are always kind of alternating between these interaction modes, collaboration, two teams discovering some solution, and what we call X as a service, stabilizing, maturing a service so that it can be consumed autonomously by other teams, right? Very much like we have infrastructure as a service with cloud providers like AWS or Google, we're trying to apply these same principles internally because that's what's going to allow our teams to go really fast with more autonomy. So this kind of pattern is what we expect over time. More collaboration in the beginning. As we discover more, then we need less collaboration. Eventually, we can provide the service in this X as a service way. So we're clarifying platform service boundaries and we're providing abstractions so that we can reduce the cognitive load of, of the teams consuming the platform. We can make it easier for them to use the services in a clear way by, by having good abstractions and hiding from the teams what should be hidden and not necessarily everything that could be hidden. Like I said, let's look now at sort of the other side. What is a product? Um, if we look at the Wikipedia, the definition is kind of uh, plain, if you like. Um, anything that can be offered to a market to satisfy the desire or need of a customer. Okay, that doesn't really tell us that much. Um, I like the definition from Mar Marty Kagan, who is uh, well known in um, Silicon Valley and other, um, other areas as, as a product person. And he thinks of the product as a holistic user experience, right? And I think this is pretty obvious these days for for most people, right? When we think about Apple products, for example, uh, we know how much they, they invest in the usability on the experience of using the product, not just the functionality. So the functionality is one part, design is another important part, and then also obviously monetization and content if we're talking about usually um, end user facing product. More specifically, a product is optional to use, right? No one is forced to use a product. I'm not forced to buy any particular kind of sneakers uh, if I don't want to, right? Um, a product is also carefully designed and curated. So the product should make it easier for the, the customers, the, the buyers of the product to do some sort of task, right? To uh, simplify some workflow, um, abstract some, some details that are not important for the user, etc. A product also simplifies something for users, right? In the same, in the same vein, um, sometimes the kind of the mechanics and the things that need to happen to provide some product can be quite complicated, but that doesn't mean that we can't abstract and provide a much simpler interface. Uh, easier way to consume the product that provides the value the customer need, even though behind the scenes it can actually be much more complicated than what maybe the user might expect. And finally, because we have the right level of abstraction to our service, that means we should be able to um, evolve the product and take advantage of technology changes, right? Um, we don't want the products and we know the products cannot stagnate and um, use the same technology forever. We need to take advantage of what the industry is offering, otherwise we'll qu quickly be um, behind the competition, right? That's pretty clear as well by now in 2022. So now we've seen a few principles of what makes a good product at least. So how does this apply to platform? Well, we can do a simple replace product by platform and see what we end up with. A platform should be optional to use uh, to, for the most part. There might be some exceptions, but we shouldn't force team to use the platforms and use services if they're not a good fit for their needs, right? And because we're not mandating the platform, that means the platforms must to some extent advocate for their product, for their platform, and sort of market it to internal teams. This doesn't mean we're suddenly going to become marketeers if we're in a platform team, but paying attention to exposing our product, our platform to other teams, explaining what, what, what do we provide, what are the advantages, why should they 
use the platform? What is it going to help them with? And that's quite important to, to keep in mind. A platform, like a product, should be carefully designed and curated, right? So this goes back to the idea of collaborating with the, with the customers to understand what they need, to understand what exactly should we build, right? Um, we need to design the platforms with the user in mind, in this case, our internal teams, and focus in particular on the user experience or the developer experience of consuming the platform. Oftentimes in the past, at least in my experience, we built platforms that were um, complicated to use and they were mandated on other people, on other teams. And so instead of helping them, we were increasing their cognitive load. We were increasing their effort because now they had to deal with this awkward or not really uh, a good fit for their use case uh, plat type of platform but they were forced to use it. And so we're actually adding more effort to that team. We're adding more cognitive load, which is the opposite of what we should be trying to do. Because the platform should simplify something for users, not make it more complicated. And so the platforms must help users achieve their goals by starting by understanding and simplifying their tasks, their workflows, um, whatever they need to, to get done. And finally, the platform also evolves to take advantage of technology changes, right? Uh, platforms uh, must evolve the capabilities that they offer, whether we're adding new capability, we're relying on um, external technology, we're relying on open source, whatever it is that's going to help us improve the platform. Um, and we don't always you know, if the platform is well defined, the abstractions are, are at the right place, um, sometimes we might be able to leverage technology without actually impacting the users, make it transparent, and we can sort of change the underlying technology and, and mechanisms without necessarily impacting the users. It's not always possible, but if we have a good a platform approach, we understand what should be um, abstracted away from the teams, we might be able to change that and evolve that and use better tooling technology without necessarily um, causing any kind of impact on the teams. But the key, key thing is that we need to evolve the capabilities of the platform. And the platform needs modern product management, definitely, um, and service management. And I'm, there will be other talks in this conference that talk about a product management perspective, and I really recommend looking at that if you don't have uh, a good understanding yet or experience of how does product management um, influence the, the implementation, the evolution of a platform. It's really key to make it work. So finally, I'm going to give a couple of examples of platform as a product. Uh, one is from a company called Uswitch. Um, this is a comparison website for home services in the UK. And it's very interesting because not very long ago, they really focus on the autonomy of teams. And uh, here you can see what we call stream aligned teams in team topologies. Three teams, each of them focusing on a different service, comparison of mobile providers, energy providers, etc. And they had almost full autonomy. There was no platform. Each team kind of took care of everything, the infrastructure, the tooling, etc. But what happened was that initially this was helpful, but over time, they started to see an increase on the cognitive load on these teams. They had more and more things to worry about, um, including in terms of AWS services that they use. So it's interesting, they actually used this um, graphic of how many calls the teams were doing directly to AWS services as, as a proxy, if you like, as an indicator of how much effort was being put into um, understanding these services and using them. And so there's this great post from Paul Ingalls, the CTO at Uswitch, where he was talking that people were spending uh, more time dealing with low-level services, therefore spending their time on relatively low-value decisions. And so they decided to introduce a platform, and Kubernetes as well. And he said, we didn't change the organization in order to use Kubernetes. We use Kubernetes because we wanted to change the organization. So this is really interesting. They wanted to 
reduce cognitive load on teams, they happen to select Kubernetes as their platform kind of uh, foundation. And then they built on top of that. They actually found out what was needed in their, uh, by their platform, by their internal teams. And so over time, this graphic kind of changed. Once they introduced the platform, teams could rely on those platforms, on those abstractions, and reduce the cognitive load, reduce the effort they were putting on understanding and configuring and using all these AWS services. So this was a good thing because effectively we are reducing the effort cognitive load on the teams, allowing them to focus more on their customers, on the, the business uh, results. And Paul also said they wanted to scale teams but maintain the principles that they had from the beginning of autonomy, work with minimal coordination and use self-service infrastructure, which is uh, very much in line with the platform definition that we saw earlier, if you remember, um, from Evan Butcher, right? And therefore, self-service platforms are fundamental. Uh, it's a fundamental aspect. It's not a nice to have if we want autonomy and minimal coordination. And I also wanted to mention kind of the path they took to build a platform at USwitch. They didn't go off and spend three months or six months build, building all kinds of services they identified who is going to be the first customer and they built the first services in collaboration, understanding what this first customer and internal team would need. And they didn't necessarily worry from the beginning, is this going to be what other teams need? Because we need to start somewhere and it's better to start with an actual customer, people who are going to use the platform and then evolve the service to, to match and cater for other needs than to build it in the abstract and try to serve everyone and then ends up not serving um, any team. But they were actually quite successful with this approach. Um, they started getting more traction, having other teams onboarding the platform. Again, it was not mandated. It was not forced on teams to use it. Um, and they actually came up with a challenge, which was some teams wanted sort of proof that the platform um, performance requirements and their response time and latency, etc., was a good match for what the teams were doing before, right? Because teams were doing this by themselves uh, until the platform um, team came. And so they actually had to clarify, you know, this, are, this is our, our SLAs, our SLOs, and here's the results, the performance of the platform services, etc. Which again, is very much focused on reducing friction of adopt, adopting the platform, making it clear for other teams what, it, what is the value of this platform for you. And eventually, um, they got kind of adopted basically by uh, all the teams, even those that were more reluctant earlier to adopt the platform. And they also had the space to address some cross-functional needs that typically would not be addressed by one single team, was not the priority. But with the platform, of course, we can start addressing common needs that um, each individual team won't really be willing to, to pay for. And it's interesting, today, um, you can find more information on our website on teamtopology.com slash examples. Um, the example from USwitch, today, they actually have multiple platforms, multiple internal platforms, not just at the infrastructure level, but also on the data level, consumer data, and even marketing, affiliate marketing platform. So this is also an interesting example of how once we put in place this mindset and we actually focus on customers and we show the value of the platform, typically we might start seeing how other platforms might come up and provide value in other areas, uh, sometimes might be even um, domain specific, and, and other times is, are going to be more generic that uh, cross the main um, services. So like I said in the beginning, there can be infinite ways that we can think about platforms and manifestation. It's the principles and what makes platform as a product um, successful that we should have in common. And very quickly, also another example from Adidas. They, they um, in the last years, actually invested a lot internally in, in their um, internal uh, software teams, but also in their platform engineering. And so, as you can see here on the top right, 
they see the platform as a product and the, the actual products so this is most these are mostly the digital services online so when you go and buy something at uh, adidas online um, that uh, those are the, the the products that they mean here but they are relying on the platform as a product as well um, and so on the left you can see what type of services they have in the adidas digital platform and you can see that they use different types of interaction so collaboration as we were uh, discussing earlier, acts as a service and also enabling, which is more of a teaching and mentoring and helping another team learn about some domain where they might have some, some gaps. So it's really interesting how at Adidas they adopted these interaction modes from team topologies because they understand for a successful platform, we need to alternate between these interaction modes and sometimes they, they we even need to help teams learn about our service, whatever that might be, maybe it's about learning about continuous delivery or learning about monitoring, anything uh, is possible. So I'm really coming to the end and going back to the initial question, what is platform as a product? Why should I adopt this approach? Hopefully you have some answers as well, at least. Um, and what happens if we adopt this approach is that we tend to have happier users or engineers because we are catering for their needs. We're not just imposing services on them to use. Uh, we're reducing their cognitive load. We're making the experience of consuming the platform easier. And so they don't have so much to know and remember in order to uh, use the platform. And we're avoiding technology bloat. We're, bloat. we're trying to keep the platform as small as possible and focus on the real needs. But it's also designed to evolve over time, taking advantage of technology landscape, uh, making sure we keep uh, competitive in, inside our platform. Finally, we have a number of resources if you want to know more uh, on teamtopology.com. We also have a number of examples of different organizations like USwitch and others who have adopted this platform as a product approach. So have a look there. We have infographics as well, which are a good way to get an overview of what is Team Topologies, why is it uh, important, uh, so have a look at those as well. And finally, we have a Team Topologies Academy where we kind of condense the ideas from Team Topologies and expand on them. For example, platform as a product, something that is a small part of the Team Topologies book, but we've now expanded and we actually have a platform learning path in the Academy where you can learn more about platform as a product, especially what are these key techniques that we can apply to build a successful internal platform as a product, um, including, you know, what is the value proposition of platform? Who are really the, the customers, the users of our platform? And how do we curate and evolve this engineering experience that we've been talking about? So check that out if you're interested to know uh, more in detail, some techniques and concepts for platform as a product. And with that, I say goodbye. I will be available in Slack to answer questions. I hope this was useful and feel free to contact on social media or um, wherever you, you find me. Thank you very much.